Hello my loves and welcome back to the Hottie Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome. My name is Jessica Alexandria. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. Now, as you guys can see, we are going to be working, vibing from one of my absolute favorite places in my home area, the home environment, and that is my garden altar. I do a lot of my work setting intention, meditating, praying, journaling here within this space, not only for myself, but also for my friends, my family, my clients. It is absolutely special, a very, very special place for me. And I wanted to share it with you guys, partly because the sun is setting, the birds tend to come out and sing their last few songs of the day. And it's just really such, it's such a vibe. Now you may see some gardenias hanging here in the corner of the um, apothecary space. These garden, these gardenias are actually from my garden and I'm hanging them because I'm soon going to be picking them, well, drying them out and taking the petals and adding them to the next candle, next fixed candle, which will be in very limited amounts in the apothecary. So if that's something that you are drawn to, gardenias are very beautiful, very fragrant, and also known for their protection and the peace that is that they bring. So when I saw these gardenias blooming in my garden and I wasn't even expecting them to bloom, I knew that I wanted to do something special. I wanted to make something that would last with them. And for me, it was gonna be fixed candled a fixed candle situation all the way. One for myself and I wanted to share just enough um, that you know others could enjoy but obviously as you can see there's only four blooms available so it will be in limited amounts. Anyway we are going to be diving into the full moon that's happening in the sign of Scorpio. The time is going to be 7 49 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I am using a, my chart it's a free chart poll from astro.com. That's the website that I use every single time. They're not, they don't sponsor my YouTube channel, although I've been saying for years that I wish they, they did. They're just hands down the best, the most accurate when it comes to um, chart polling, but also they cover the board when it comes to all of your astrological needs, whatever it is that you may be studying. At least that's what I've come to um, expect from them. Okay. So this full moon, like all full moons are, is going to be very special. Why? Because they symbolize time in our history for me personally, but I believe this where we can come to ourselves, to our sacred, our sacred places, our sacred spaces and connect with ourselves, connect with the universe, connect with the energies around us, our angels and our guides and ask for clarity, but also to manifest a set intention. That's something that I'm really big on. Now, Scorpio magic always tends to be transformative, largely transformative. What's so interesting about Scorpion energy and the full moon, this full moon in particular, is this theme that I keep seeing of releasing that which does not serve us. Now, I know that that is something that we hear again and again, how many different ways can we say release and surrender, but truly Scorpio naturally connects us to the part of our body that allows us when we release, when we surrender, we open up for cleansing to happen. We open up for relief to happen. We, we make more room and space for what is to be to be. Scorpio reminds us that if we're holding on to anything for too long, if we can't surrender it, if we can't let it go, that very thing can make us so sick. It can make us congested, stuffy. I was just actually pulling a reading for those subscribe, subscribe to Bahati Love Notes. Um, and we were talking about that in full of how important it is to make sure that we're not holding on to emotion that we're not holding on to our identities or our egos or things that stifle us or relationships or whatever it is that we find ourselves latching onto for different reasons. And we'll talk about that too, because looking at the full moon too, this moon is squaring off with Pluto. And that energy right there, there's a lot going on. And these, this trait, this, this tendency is gonna show up 
for the full moon, but also for the remainder of 2024. But back to what it was I was saying, it's, it's important that we are assessing, that we're evaluating our bodies and scanning our physical bodies to see where is their tension, what is it that we're holding on to, because not only does it reveal to you unconscious fears that may be sabotaging your own growth and your own evolution, but it reveals to you the parts of yourself that can be poured into and nurtured that you may not recognize because you are refusing to look at it to address it, and that's something that's very human. So this is where this Pluto aspect is very important, Pluto in the sign of Aquarius. Now, Pluto, this P right here, sitting in the sign of Aquarius, Aquarius rules innovation, rebellion, striking out, striking, uh, striking out, striking different and doing things differently, is being radically transformed by Pluto. Anything that is holding us back, that are, is keeping us stunted, and parts of those bits and pieces of your mind and conversation have already started revealing themselves to you, especially now that Mercury has been retrograde since April 1st and will finally move direct on the 25th. But, you know, I that's a huge blessing all by itself. Pluto showing up and squaring this full moon is going to give us another opportunity to look at maybe assess and to understand why did we need to why we felt the need to hold on to this thing for so for so long for so and so hard you know sometimes when we're dealing with the energy of pluto we have to look at our our understanding of like power and control right so let's say if we hold on to the tendency to people please we subconsciously may feel like this is going, if we're nice people, if we don't have boundaries, if we don't rock the boat, then this is gonna make our lives more easier and more safer because we're not angering the people around us. So you may have this tendency to lose your voice, lose your opinion and go with the flow of things instead of speaking up and saying, I disagree or I don't want that for my life or that's your vision, not mine especially, I'm, I know I'm jumping around the chart a lot here, but especially because a lot of our personal planets are currently transiting through the sign of Aries. And Aries is a huge, is a huge element, a huge energy of being a self-starter, putting yourself out there, advocating for yourself, questioning your identity or defining your identity, depending on where it is at in your journey. Now that the North Node is transiting through Aries, especially at the time of the full moon, this is another time where it's fated for us to begin to look at how we are individually outside of others, who we are, how do I identify myself to be now after all of this growth, out of all of this transition, after all this transformation, who am I now? And there may be some parts of you that you've discovered especially with this beautiful Jupiter Uranus conjunction, which has only just recently happened within the last few days, the last couple days. This has been, but this transit has been tight enough that it's been bringing on a, a lot of awareness within you and within the, across the globe. What are our values now? What traditions do we still wanna honor and what things have we outgrown? There's gonna be parts of you now that you look at yourself in the mirror and you say, I have really, outgrown this this place within my life i have really outgrown this relationship this is the way that i've always done it this is the way that my family has done it this has been passed on to me but i don't see the value in that anymore what's more important to me is my peace what's more important to me is my sense of security what's more important to me is my faith these are things that were once compromised. These were things that you were once okay with compromising. And now you have this awakening, this awareness, this shift deep within you that is undeniable, clear, striking that says, now that I know this, I do not find myself, I do not see myself going back. And for some of you guys, you don't have a choice. <laughs> you don't have a choice. Why? Because these changes and shifts are so profoundly felt within you that if you decided to active action Aries, if you decided to take steps and move in the direction that you were told to move away from or that you outgrew, I'm not speaking this over you, but I'm just saying what it is that I see within the astrology charts and with this energy, you may actually feel sick. You may actually feel 
physical ailments. There could be headaches, migraines, tension, head spins, definitely in the head. Part of it is because of the crunching. Oops, sorry guys, um, the wind's kind of picking up back there. So I think one of my plant pots fell over because I was just watering them. But um, you may feel a lot of tension uh, in your body rejecting and, and not accepting what you are trying to convince it to do, right? So this is definitely a vibe check. That's something else that I think that you guys should really look into is the vibes. Saturn transiting now through the sign of Pisces at the time of the full moon. This is just another time where we're looking at we're, we're not even that where we're looking where we are respecting that which we have been feeling all of this time, which is I know that this is where my place is. I know that that is where I this is where I sit currently, but I'm learning that my boundaries have been crossed. I'm learning that this is not who I am. I do not. A lot of you guys, is, a lot of you guys, your com, your commitments, your promises, these contractual agreements, these commitments that you have, you know, committed yourself to till death do you part, you know, damn near. You're now asking, you're, you're now aware that the, the contract, the agreement, the promise, when you made, when you said your word on that, it needs to be separate. It needs to be redefined. It needs to be disconnected from you because through that promise and through the, 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 the intention to fulfill that promise and to power through Saturn's energy here is teaching you that this is not moving in integrity with your path. It was a part of something that you needed to learn in your journey here on earth, but this is not a lesson that needs to continue to repeat. And you're gonna feel it because the vibes are gonna be off, to put it mildly. It just doesn't intuitively resonate with you anymore. It doesn't feel authentic. No matter how it is identified on paper or how it may seem to fit the script and fit the bill of what your life should look like or what your life should feel like when you sit with yourself you have an authentic response that says no this is not for me and this is where your boundaries and your word you may have to teach yourself that this is something that i need to now relinquish this is now something that i need to let go of this is now something that i need to uh, cut, cut clean, separate myself from, even though I promised it to be this way, even though this was my word and I'm someone who follows through with my word, the truth is, is that to follow through with my word would be detrimental to your growth, to my growth, and this is not what the universe has for me. If you need to use this full moon for anything, one of the very things that comes to mind is asking for your angels and your guides to help separate you from the things that do not serve you any longer. And that can feel like a real threat to life as, as you know it, because when you invite in your ancestors, your angels and your guides to partake in helping cut cords for you or helping you towards greater bits of freedom, spiritual awareness, awakening, this means that those ties are going to start being worked on being severed. And that can really call forth a lot of triggerization in, in us individually where we're like, my safety net, my way of being, my way of living is now different. And I have to start over fresh or I have to start over new or this is what I'm used to. So that demon, that, that thing that I'm used to, it's, what do they say? The devils that we recognize, the devils that we can identify, they seem safer than us branching out into the unknown and relying oftentimes on faith and hoping for the best. Even if your intuition is telling you, this is where we are to go, this is the right thing to do, it's still, it's still very scary. And as a human being, from one human being to another, I get it, I get it. So this is one of those times where we look at this interesting square again of the moon, the full moon and Pluto. Pluto says that the same things that give us control, the same things that make us 
feel like we're empowered could also be the same things that imprison us and take our power away from us. And sometimes you need to radically change your life, Pluto transiting through Aquarius, Sometimes you need to radically change your life in order to progress, to move forward, and to activate some of the greatest blessings and opportunity within your life. And this may mean that there will be a huge shift in what you have always valued and what you've always prioritized. It may mean a shift from your community, your friendship, kinship, relationships, but it is worth it. And don't take my word for it. The part of fortune is sitting in the same sign that is being activated by Jupiter and, and Uranus and this full moon right now. You can't see it, but the sun is right here and the part of fortune is right here. And they're both sitting directly on the DC line, the descendant line, which represents relationships and um, like marriage, marriage partners, marriage uh, connections, and also sometimes um, enemies enemies that we soon learn you you want people things that were once close and safe to you turn into the bane of your existence and you, you start to see a different side of someone that you never would have recognized that's real right but the part of fortune here, here sitting in the seventh house says that this this striking this call to strike yourself away from what literally no longer serves you and venture into the unknown and to really follow the path of your new realigned values is going to activate partnership, union, connection, intimacy, support. And that is something to be huge, hugely valued right now. Just like Pluto, I'm sorry, just like Scorpio, who is actually ruled by co-ruled by Pluto and Mars, just like Scorpio rules releasing, letting go, surrendering, it also rules intimacy and depth and our ability to connect even further because we allowed that surface level lens or filter to fall away and to be released and you are being seen vulnerable very very vulnerable that vulnerable side of you is worth protecting but that vulnerable side of you is also worth sharing with the right people the right things the right situations the right places that can support and hold the magnitude of the blessing it is when you are raw you raw unfiltered beautiful you this will look like this will show up not only in our relationships intimate where you can draw closer to those who are deserving of that but also it will look like your relationship with the, the the divine your relationship with yourself where the same parts of you that you may have shame that you may hide that you may suppress that you may hold on to and never release because what happens if i let go what happens if i reveal this part of me you will find love and intimacy and connection and sharing and depth there and be able to embrace those parts of you even if you found found them once foul or you couldn't even look at them you didn't want to even address them you didn't want to see them you didn't want others to see them there might be shame there might be guilt you might feel vulnerable you might feel shaking your energy might shake those are the parts of you that are worth discovering and drawing closer to. Now, for those of you that are interested in relationships, intimacy, and connection, I'm not saying that there isn't depth here because with Scorpio, there will always, there tends to really truly be a lot of depth. If it wasn't for so much profound depth, they wouldn't be so protective of the deep well of emotion and truth and intuition that comes with Scorpio energies across the board but Scorpios also have that that sting that that punch that you got too close to me and now you're paralyzed <laughs> now you can't walk <laughs> you gotta live like this for the rest of your life right so there's there's that part of you that is also can be activated here protection potency magic mystery secrets 
those are things too that are worth exploring. They're also worth sharing when it comes to relationships and connections. So the depth is there. I just also feel like you can discover when it comes to relationships, you can discover more of a person. Let's say if you're in a relationship right now and dating, or if you are looking for intimacy and connection, just getting out and showing up for small like light things with the perspective of listening and being present and allowing someone to be their authentic self with no punishment, no, no ulterior motive. That's a wonderful way to uh, invoke intimacy and depth and connection in your relationships right now or something to ask for if you're setting intention, which I highly, I do recommend setting intention at this full moon for love, romance, intimacy. I'll open up those slots for that in the apothecary shortly after. Love, intimacy, connection, depth are huge things to set intention for at the full moon. Also, uh, if for those of you guys that work magic or have worked magic with me, the Pluto death oil. This chart has Pluto death oil intentions all over it. I'm 100% going to be recreating more of that oil, but it's all about profound, transformative, radical, powerful change that sets you up to become the best version of yourself. Or if you're already in the midst of this, which so many are with the Jupiter Uranus conjunction and Pluto, <laughs> just Pluto, <laughs> always, right? <laughs> just Pluto in the sign of Aquarius, but for everyone it's different. Let's say if you have a lot of Aquarius placements, you're gonna feel this a little bit stronger and harder than most. If you are Scorp uh, Scorpio, you're gonna feel this to infinity and beyond. Water signs, just profoundly, you're going to be feeling this. Water and earth, you're going to be feeling this. And even fire. Um, air, I, you, you, you seem like, well, no. <laughs> no, we're all just going to be feeling this. I don't like to pin and say because that, you know, just one sun sign is going to feel. I have to look at your, your, your astrology chart. But anyways, uh, Pluto death oil. I also think that growth, focusing on growth inner growth, inner reflection, intuition, and protection are key, key, key points to set intention to work your magic with um, big time. I'll link all of my, all of the things that I recommend and why. I'll link them down below. So I am surprised that I was able to get all of what I was able to get done and out and said, I'm gonna pull a card for you guys real quick if you don't mind. Let me pull away my iPad for a second. And I'm going to shuffle for you the Crystal Spirits Oracle. And we will see what is the overarching energy or message that can be added on to the Scorpio full moon. I'm going to try not to be too loud with this. However, if you're sensitive to noise, now would be a great time to cover your ears in three, two, one. One more time. Three, two, one. And one more time. Three, two, one. Angels and guides of our universe from the highest lights of the universe only, for our highest and greatest good only, what is the message that you wish to share for the collective, those who are watching, the viewers, for the Scorpio full moon, with all the changes that we are undergoing? What do we need to hear and what are the blessings? The first card to jump out is Selenite. Very interesting. This is connecting me immediately to clarity and emotion and in our thoughts. Let me go ahead and read it to you. Selenite. I'll link this oracle deck down below. Liquid light, fluidity, flexibility, illumination, clarity, and raising your vibration. That has Jupiter conjunct 
Uranus all over it in the sign of Taurus. When Selenite spirit appears, it's a message to you. Oh, it's message to you is to keep moving past your challenges. Your sights always on raising your vibration to be like liquid light, illuminating fluid and flexible. For even the earth and her rocks, stones and crystals change and reveal more of themselves over time. Selenite spirit message is that whatever the phase of change, you must yield your expectations about how things should be so that you can discover the beauty and how things are evolving. That like liquid light flowing around an obstacle, you have the capacity to move more freely than you might realize. Know that a new perspective can help you see that. You don't ever have to be stopped in your tracks. Be flexible in your thinking, for there is more wisdom in the universal consciousness than in your own individual mind, and it's always available to you. The way out of the old patterns is to enter the unknown. Didn't we just talk about that? Without maps or well-defined familiar paths. Surrender your fear and know that the conscious universe is here to provide you with clarity and, and guide you through unexpected twists and turns. That is definitely pretty much... I don't want to say a whole summary, but a very good summary of what it is that I was pulling from the chart and what it is that I'm intuitively seeing and sensing. So I love that this card definitely reflects, reflects that. The next card that we have is Bronzite. And you might have gotten a quick glimpse of the other crystal. Also, I wish you guys were here right now because the scent of these gardenias is phenomenal i'm not exaggerating it is phenomenal and every time the breeze kind of picks up and pushes around the petals i'm smelling them i'm smelling them <laughs> it's just really so beautiful gardenias have always been one of my favorite flowers when i moved to florida not this round but when i moved to florida when i was in high school whoa guys Wait till you hear, I, I rarely see this card, so it's really interesting that it came up. Wait till you hear the message. Bronzite, connected to loyalty, trust, steadfastness, self-respect, and trusting that the universe has your back. Now is the time to be sure you trust in the conscious universe and remain true to your authentic self. Let me stop. Even if that authentic self has changed and evolved, if you promised someone or something in the past when you were a different person, it is understandable that that you and that promise may have shifted and changed. Or if you made a commitment to something and it's you're not you're not flaking, you're not lacking in authenticity. You have evolved, and it's important for you to express that evolution, that growth, and how showing up in the same way or staying committed to this to the same thing that there was a bond there can be a prison to you and i don't know why that that's the message that's coming through again and again but it just needs to be stated okay be judicious in extending your trust oh wait okay knowing it is a gift from the conscious universe that must be honored respect others by being trustworthy yourself speaking of them in ways that are honorable heal the past by owning your role in it so you can trust yourself again having learned the lessons that will strengthen you let me read the relationship message for you as well i feel like it's losing your ability to see it because i have my camera situated a certain way even if you've been portrayed in the past you can heal the sting by extending trust again as challenging as that may be Bronze and Night Spirit reminds you that this time, however, you are much wiser and stronger, more mindful of the signs that signal your need to step back and nurture yourself. Being true to another is an expression of the beauty of the divine, and you have this capacity. Your loyalty and steadfastness will be rewarded by the conscious universe, perhaps in ways that you don't expect. That's the North Node. Honestly, that's giving the North Node translating through the sign of Taurus. Let me double check. I can like literally pull charts all day and then forget the chart. I do the same thing with my, I do the same thing with my personal chart. Yeah, North Node and Taurus. The other day I said Jupiter conjunct Pluto and I was like, girl, what are you talking about? Okay. Okay, hold on. 
Uh, be true to yourself, knowing that a loving, respectful relationship with yourself lays the groundwork for a loving, respectful relationship with another. Remember, you are always protected when divinely directed. So if the divine gives you the directions to go a certain way or to change, to pivot, to do this, it's your duty to, to move accordingly, to pivot accordingly. If you have to take additional time to reflect, to ask for confirmation and to be reassured by the universe, ask for it, but don't ignore it. The last card we have here is Orange Sapphire. And I'm really, 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 really loving this color right now, but I don't remember what this card symbolizes. If I had to guess, I would say joy, optimism, and expansion. I also love Sapphire so much. Oh, okay. Joy and sensuality, respecting your body and body love. Just as healing crystal crystals are of the earth, yet separate from it, we are part of Gaia and the same water minerals and crystals are found within us as well as within the earth. That is beautiful, a beautiful reminder. Sometimes we can feel completely in our heads and out of touch with our bodies, but Orange Sapphire Spirit is here to remind us that our bodies will serve us throughout our lifetime. So treat yours lovingly. Nourish it with good foods from the earth and water that will replenish you wonder at your body's beauty and strength marvel at its ability to keep your heart beating and your lungs inhaling and exhaling without your conscious effort regardless of the flaws you think your body has now is a time to pay attention to it and tend to it with love the message of the orange sapphire spirit is to honor your body and experience its miracles the senses that distinguish so many different scents sounds textures and colors be fully present in your body today and observe what you experience and what your body has to tell you care for it and express gratitude to it for it's through your body senses that you can experience pleasure i love this this card also says hug someone hold their hand and explore the gifts of the senses with another listening to music together cooking good food with each other being in the same physical space ground your relationship and activities you do with each other today so that you both can be reminded of the precious gift that is the body and nourish your relationship to it what i love about that is the fact that our chart, did <laughs> you guys look at my password? I hope not. <laughs> um, what I love about that is the fact that uh, the way that I pull the charts, I also kind of employ like horary astrology, H-O-R-A-R-Y, um, to predict the future. That's one of my favorite modalities of astrology that I don't really share. I actually share it with the world all the time, but I don't express that that's the, the the modality that I'm using when I'm pulling charts um but anyways it's really telling to me that at the time of the chart being pulled that there's the the full moon is well the sun but the full moon is aspecting the dc line the seventh house and also the, the ascendant the first house the house of self so that connects us right there to relationships connections partnership intimacy union and I love that the um, cards are suggesting that if love is on the mind, if love is on the brain, intimacy and connection, that pleasure and sharing and joy and connection is very, very important, right? And I also just want to say that some things about intimacy and connection don't always look like sex. They don't always look like sexual expression. And sometimes when we think about Scorpio, we think about sex because Scorpio actually rules the orgasm. It rules our ability to release, to surrender, to let go so that we can experience the ultimate height of our pleasure in the moment when it comes to sex, when it comes to physical pleasure. But truthfully, um, I don't want us to dismiss the importance of how intimate and connecting and wonderful it feels to share space with someone and simply hold hands and simply listen to each other and simply sh share space or cook food for each other or share those are very intimate acts that are just as deep if you're if you are setting the intention for it to be as sex is and when we live in a world where sex is something that is thrown around so quickly that people use it for quick connection but aren't actually really connecting with within themselves and with their bodies and with another person um we can oftentimes forget and overlook that 
sometimes the most intimate thing can be dissociating and not even you might not actually be connecting with your partner or even if you're self-pleasure you know you might you might be rushing through the process and just trying to fulfill a basic need when this could be something that is so much more than that it could have so much depth you could be discovering more about yourself not just your physical body's pleasure and how that evolves and changes over time but feelings that you may have held on to or fantasies not even sexual but fantasies of life that you would like to live in your imagination and those are all very beautiful things so this full moon to put it all in a nutshell is very special every full moon and every new moon is special but they're just so unique and divine each and every single one of them so if you would like to talk about more of the full moons the new moons and astrological magic subscribe to the youtube channel if you aren't already if you are currently subscribed you might want to make sure that your notifications are turned on. YouTube is being weird these days. It's because they're going through it. They have been going through it for a long time. It started when Pluto was transiting through Capricorn and now that it's in the sign of Aquarius. Good luck to social media. Um, so one way to show support of this YouTube channel again is to subscribe to get plenty more videos where this came from. Until then, you guys, thank you so much for allowing me to pull charts, to pull cards, and to connect with you. I do hope that this full moon is good for you. <laughs> so speaking of intimacy, I hope that this full moon is as good for you as, <laughs> as it was and will be for me. Okay. <laughs> and on that note, I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>